Today we'll explore how to build a React website using an HTML template. Specifically, we'll demonstrate the process by creating a fantastic React School website based on an existing online HTML template. To begin, open your web browser and go to Google. In the search bar, type W3 Layouts and press Enter. Look for the free responsive website link in the search results and click on it to access the website. Once you're on the website, browse through the available web templates and choose one that you find appealing. In this tutorial, we'll be using the wonderful school template. Click on free download to obtain it at no cost, but be sure to sign in before downloading. Now, it's time to set up your project. Start by creating a folder for your project. Let's call it React Project. Afterward, copy the downloaded zip file into this React Project folder and then proceed to extract its contents. Once the extraction is complete, you can safely delete the original zip file. Open the React Project folder using Visual Studio Code to begin working on your project. Within Visual Studio Code, open a new terminal. To create a new React application named School, use the following command npx create React App School. Once the project is created, navigate into the School folder by entering the command cd school in the terminal. To initiate the React development server, use npm start. As you can see, your application is now up and running in your web browser. Before we proceed, let me show you how this template looks like before we can convert it to React or JSX syntax. This is the landing page. This is the about page. This is the courses page. And this is the contact page. Let's begin the conversion process. In your template directory, you'll find four HTML pages. About JHTML, contact, HTML, courses, HTML, and index, HTML. To get started, create corresponding components for these pages in your React project. Navigate to the SRC folder of your React project and create a Pages folder to store these page components. Begin with the About page by creating a functional component named AboutJSX. Repeat this process for the other pages, Contact, Courses and Index. Next, we'll proceed by installing the React Router DOM dependency for routing. Open a new terminal, go to your React folder using the CD school command, and then use the npm install React Router DOM command to install the dependency. Once the installation is complete, empty the contents of the app.js file and create a new functional component. Inside this component, Start by importing the page components you've previously created. Additionally, import browser router, routes, and route from React Router DOM to enable routing. Within the return statement, set up routers for the individual pages. To resolve a name conflict with the index component, Let's rename it to Home. Finally, access the website in your browser to observe our current progress. You'll notice that you can easily access all the pages by simply modifying the URL. Now, let's move on to the next task, which is transferring all the assets, including CSS files, JavaScript files, images and fonts, from your template to the public directory of your React application. First, go to the public directory of your React application and create a folder named Assets. Then, go to your template directory and copy all the assets into this newly created Assets folder. Copy the CS folder, Fonts folder, Images folder, and JS folder, and paste them into the Assets folder you just created. Now, let's proceed further. Open any of the files from your template, for instance, index.html. Copy all the contents of the head section. Then, 
go to the index.html file in the public directory of your React application and replace all the contents within its head section with the copied content. Ensure that you adjust the relative paths of the style, font, and script tags based on your assets folder. For example, verify that this link is correctly positioned. Since it is, leave it. Confirm and adjust any other relative paths you may come across. Return to the same file where you previously copied the contents of the head section, and this time, copy the contents of the footer section. Just as you did with the head section, follow the same process for the footer section. Verify the relative paths and make any necessary adjustments accordingly. Now, it's time to begin transferring page data from HTML to JSX. Let's start with index.html. To make this process simpler and more understandable, I'll guide you through converting one section step by step, and then you can proceed to do the same for other sections and pages. To start, copy one section of the index.html file from your template, let's say the header section, into the home component. You'll notice several errors on this page. The first task is to replace all the HTML comments with JSX comments. HTML comments are written like this, while JSX comments are written like this. To replace all the comments at once, we'll use the Find and Replace tool. Locate the opening comment tag in HTML and replace it with the opening comment tag in JSX. Do the same for the closing comment tag as well. The next step involves formatting. Let's start by updating the indentation of this component. Ensure that each element starts on a new line and is indented correctly to make it easier to track the opening and closing tags. You can break long lines of code to improve readability. For instance, let's break this excessively long line of code. Notice that this element lacks an opening tag. You can either remove it or add the opening tag. In JSX, it's essential to close all tags, even self-closing ones like this input field. Add a forward slash just before the closing angle bracket to close it. This rule also applies to tags like HR, BR, IMG, audio, and video, among others. Always ensure they are properly closed. While editing, you might encounter warning errors. Hover over them to read more about them and debug as needed. For instance, this requires its corresponding HTML entity. Self-close this input field as well. As you can see, all the errors have disappeared and we have successfully converted this to JSX. Repeat the same procedure for all the other sections of the index XML page. Here are some potential issues to watch out for. 1. Inline styling. You'll need to use an object with key value pairs. You can refer to the styling video I uploaded in the channel for guidance on styling components. 2. Tags with no corresponding opening and closing tags. Ensure that you either remove them or add their counterparts as necessary. It's advisable to go section by section to make tracking these tags easier. 3. Class attribute. Replace the class attribute with the class name attribute as required by JSX. 4. Internal CSS and JS codes. Remove all internal CSS and JavaScript codes and place them in the index.html file in the public directory. Here is the complete HTML to JSX conversion of the index.html page. You can pause the video to examine it closely. Now, let's verify the output in the browser. As you can observe, the landing page has been effectively converted to JSX. Please replicate this entire process for the other pages and give them a test run. If needed, feel free to pause the video and return once you've finished to continue. Here are the converted pages for index, HTML, about, HTML, courses, HTML and contact, HTML. What's our next step? 
We should identify any repetitive elements and convert them into components. Let's begin by organizing this on a per page basis. For instance, it appears that all pages share the same header, footer and breadcrumbs. We can set these aside as the components that comprise each page. To do this, start by creating a components folder within the SRC directory. Inside this components folder, create three functional components. Header, footer and breadcrumbs. In the header component, place the code for the header. Similarly, put the code for the footer inside the footer component. and the breadcrumbs code inside the breadcrumbs component. The breadcrumbs component should accept props as an argument, which will be used to pass the name of the page. In your app.js file, import the header and footer components. Position them above and below the page routers respectively. Afterward, remove the header and footer code from all four of your pages. Save the code and then check the output in the browser. As you can observe, the website remains functional. This indicates that our components have been successfully integrated. Now let's address the breadcrumbs in the About, Courses and Contact pages. Begin with the About page and import the breadcrumbs component. My apologies, it seems I misspoke earlier. Breadcrumbs should actually take two parameters, the title of the page and the page name. Let's correct that. Now that we've made that adjustment, Proceed to use the breadcrumbs component in the about component. Provide it with the page name and title properties. Repeat the same process for the contact and courses pages. Let's check the outputs in the browser. As you can see, we're enhancing code reusability and optimizing the template's efficiency. The component has been seamlessly integrated. You can repeat this entire process for generating components for any recurring elements in your templates. Start with larger elements and work your way down to smaller ones, like buttons. The more recurring patterns you identify, the more efficient your code will become thanks to increased code reusability. The next and final step in this tutorial is setting up navigation. After all, you'll want to navigate from one page to another, right? You might have noticed that I've been manually typing links into the browser, which isn't the typical behavior for web applications. To address this, let's go to the header component. Update all the anchor tags in the header component to correspond with the routes you've created in the app component. For instance, replace all links to index.html with a forward slash to route to the home component. Similarly, replace courses.html with courses. Contact HTML with me contact. And about.html with an about to route to their respective pages. Save your code and test the navigation links in the browser. You'll notice that your navigation works flawlessly. To prevent the page from refreshing during navigation, you can use the link element from React Router DOM instead of the anchor tag. For more details on this, you can refer to the video I covered in the Full Stack Development Guide. Additionally, make sure to handle events such as on-click and on-submit by using camel casing for event names and ensure that their handler functions are correctly set. For further guidance on this topic, you can also refer to the aforementioned video. Congratulations, your React template is now ready for use. The extent to which you decompose the template further depends on your specific requirements. However, at this point, your application is fully functional. You can find the complete source code for this project in my GitHub repository, which is linked in the video tutorial. Feel free to use it to meet your needs, and don't forget to give me a follow on GitHub. If you found this video tutorial helpful, 
please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, goodbye.